Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies and today I am going to do a movie review on a movie which I have been waiting to watch for a very for a very 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 long time and that is Boogie Nights by Paul Thomas Anderson. So this is one of Paul Thomas Anderson's first few movies. It's released in 1997 and it's one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies in his career, in the span of his career. And I am actually really surprised and I'm actually really really happy that I've watched this movie because I've also watched other movies recommended by Tarantino including Shaun of the Dead by Edgar Wright which is funny, it's great, it has a lot of interesting cinematography but I don't think it sticks that well with me even though it's still a great comedy and then we have Unbreakable by M. Night Shyamalan which is great, it's humane, it's a really special and unique movie but again it doesn't feel as hard-hitting or as impactful or as complex uh, of a movie that I like usually. And then we have Boogie Nights and my goodness it's been a long time since I, I say wow that's a great movie after I finish watching the movie. Like after the end credits I just sit there and I was like wow this is a great movie. So we have the character of Eddie who was 17 years old at the beginning of the movie and he sucks at everything. The only thing that he's good at is fucking. So he decided to work with Jack, a film producer and director who directs and produces porn films, pornos. And it's set in the 1970s so it's old school vintage film pornos. I don't know why I did this. I guess I'm trying to you know, do the film reel thing. And then we have the character of Amber, who is a close acquaintance of Jack. I think it's his girlfriend or or something. Um, I forgot, but Amber was originally a mom, but she and her ex-husband divorced, and she also had a son, but that son went along with the husband, and now she's also a porn star, and she really liked Eddie because Eddie can act as her own son. And then we have the character of Maurice who owns a nightclub and is also one of the close friends of Eddie who wants to be more famous because basically all of his friends are porn stars and he's not a star but he wants to be famous so he tries really hard to end up in one of his pornos even though he's a terrible actor. And then we have the character of Buck played by Don Cheadle. Uh, Jack is played by Burt Reynolds, rest in peace, amazing performance. Amber is played by Julianne Moore, also amazing performance. Mark Wahlberg plays the main character, Eddie, also fantastic. And Don Cheadle plays Buck. Buck was also a porn star, but he never really wanted to do porn. He actually really wanted to start his own business. And his character is actually the character that I root for the most in the movie. And then we have Roller Girl, played by Heather Graham, who was in Twin Peaks Season 2 playing Annie, who's this, you know, young, innocent, good girl. And then six years later, she shows up in this movie as a porn star. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised. And then we also have William H. Macy's character, whose wife is always fucking some other guy so he's jealous and he has a sad life and then actually um philip seymour hoffman also rest in peace plays scotty a fat annoying boomer microphone guy who's actually kinda gay but it was the 70s so people really didn't like that or accept that so he's also in a really bad situation. So we are introduced to all of these characters and all these characters have their own struggles, have their own things to handle. And at the beginning, everything seems kind of fine. But as the movie progresses, 
things started to fall apart for every single character and every single character faces the thing in the worst way possible and at first i was like okay so what's the real plot of the movie what's gonna happen but after the halfway point i started to understand that this movie is a multi-character storyline movie where different characters have different storylines and different things to handle and it actually makes the movie kind of enjoyable at the end actually watching this movie for me it's actually really refreshing because i a i never grew up in the usa and i grew up after the 2000s in the 2000s so i don't know what life is like in the 70s or the 80s also we're currently in 2019 when sex and everything related to sex is very sensitive it's a very sensitive thing and to see that every single character in this movie have sex and do sex related things so nonchalantly is kind of crazy for me it's like they're all existing in a parallel universe where sex is not such a taboo topic but really it's only in that group of characters where sex is considered um completely okay when it's done anywhere um any when any how with any who but the people outside of the porn industry ring they're actually a little more uh, sensitive to the whole issue but anyway before we get into the plot of the thing i would like to talk about the technical stuffs paul thomas anderson is truly an amazing director um yeah, I mean, he's a really, really good director. There are so many amazing shots in the movie. You know, Paul, I'm going to call him PTA. PTA manages to make almost every single scene interesting with an interesting shot or two or three. Also, there are so many long takes in this movie that are actually really impressive. A lot of um, um, mirror shots where we look at the character's through a mirror you know sort of sort of a reflection of the characters those are interesting as well we get some crash pans 180 degree crash pans like the one uh, you would see in damien chazelle's whiplash um which are amazing i really love it i really love the editing in the movie there are a lot of montages in this movie this movie actually has a very complex story so this movie actually documents a very long period of time so there are time skips in the movie and these montages sort of um sort of does do these time skips and they're all super duper well edited there's this montage where it's just a split screen and these split screens sort of slide to the side and then at the end of the of the montage we sort of get a dance sequence where almost every single character dances together on a stage really happily and it's a really pleasant scene but also i seldom say this but the musical choice in this movie is fantastic it ranges from you know rock music to jazz to you know one piano note being played for two minutes straight and they're all really fitting to the scene also this is not a solely drama film there's also comedic elements in the movie and when those comedic moments uh, are on screen they're actually really really funny uh, for instance we get jack who uh, who's the director and the producer of a lot of the pornos and when we when they are going into the 80s there's this new thing called videotape so um this other guy wanted jack to start using videotapes instead of films but jack insisted on using films but at the end because you know the changing of the market uh jack is forced to use videotape and so there's this one time when when jack said to the camera that he's gonna make film history on videotape and it's like a paradoxical <laughs> line 
and that's a funny moment but there are also various other funny moments here that are way more adult and mature and you know what just go watch it yourself actually i don't want to spoil this for you but um in the beginning of the movie when whenever somebody sees uh, eddie or his nickname dirk diggler uh when they see his dick they would go wow that's a great cock but Every time we see him having sex or jerking off or getting uh, sucked, we never really see it until the very, very end where it's like, here, here you go. You wanted to see his dick throughout the whole movie, right? Well, here you go. That's, that's his dick. And I just find it really funny. It's like PTA has a, has a sense of humor with this, you know? It's like... <laughs> it's like the entire movie just built just is just builds up to this moment where he finally reveals his dick and it's actually hilarious um but also one of the things that's kind of um, kind of smart about the plot is that in the porn industry everybody has nicknames and there's a scene in the very beginning of the movie where somebody called Jack's house when a party is being held at Jack's house and so a guy picks the phone up and the guy in the phone asks for a Maggie and uh, apparently Maggie is someone's mom and it's until the last act of the movie uh, one of the major characters are revealed to be actually Maggie because her um, name that's being used throughout the whole movie is actually just a nickname because duh, they're in the porn, in porn industry. Everybody uses nicknames. And there are also a lot of scenes in, in the beginning where they seem to be kind of unnecessary or unrelated. But at the end, they go full circle and it makes sense finally so it's another great thing about the movie for instance we have roller girl uh whose real name is also not revealed until like the last act and in the beginning we see scenes of her in school uh doing a test and then suddenly leaving the classroom because she just completely doesn't know how to do the test and at the end roller girl kind of um, kind of met a familiar face let's just say that i'm not gonna spoil much again also at one point in the movie this new guy is introduced to the porn industry to to jack and jack told dirk that you know hey he's the new guy and dirk was just really jealous and then this thing happened and dirk tried to stop doing porn to quit doing porn and tried to record songs instead as a singer and he completely sucked that was a really funny scene and since dirk really sucked as a singer he decided to go back to jack and that scene was actually pretty heartwarming and uh, overall i think what this movie is really about is that everyone has different goals and dreams and everyone also has different wants and needs different desires and also different weaknesses and also different vice because a lot of people in this movie are addicted to drugs a lot of them are greedy they want more money a lot of them are just horny all the time and a lot of people want attention they want fame and all of them also have a personal struggle of some sorts, but they all go together at the end. And it's just one really wholesome movie that says a lot about um, the society and humans in general. But um, the way this, the story of this movie humanizes these people who are working in the porn industry, it's just a really refreshing take. I really, really like this movie there's really not much to complain about every single scene makes sense at the end and there are even scenes where at first it feels like it's totally fine and then something really crazy or violent happened and it's just gonna happen out of nowhere or 
Sometimes you know it's gonna happen, but you don't know how or when or who or where. So you're just waiting for the moment. And when that moment happens, it's like, oh my gosh, it happened. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a surprisingly humane movie that's really, really brilliantly written, and PTA is an amazing director, indeed. I am saying Boogie Nights is uh, it's not necessarily mind-blowing. I'm going to say it's a movie really, really worth watching. Every single filmmaker out there, every single cinema lover out there must watch this movie, and I am giving Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights... A strong 9 to a 10 out of 10. So, have you watched Boogie Nights from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it. And subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.